Hello everyone, it's Arlene, and today I am going to be making my sugar cookie recipe for you. Um, I'm going to be making a ton of cookies for Thanksgiving. I have a few orders. And then I have a lot of cookies to make for my niece Danielle's baby shower. And then I have cookies for my niece Desiree's having a Christmas party. And I will be making some ugly sweater cookies for her. So I figured why not make the dough today? I can't get this camera right. <laughs> because I can always freeze it or just keep it in the refrigerator nice and tightly wrapped. And this way when I'm ready to make the cookies, that's all I have to do is pull out the dough because I have so many to make. So let's get started. All right. My recipe is... Uh, I'm going to actually double it. I'm just putting on a, a facial mask because I'm not feeling well and I don't even want to breathe on my dough. So if I sound muffled after this, I'm sorry. All right, so my recipe is three sticks of butter, unsalted, However, the recipe does ask for um, a, a half a teaspoon of salt, but because I'm using salted butter, I'm not going to add the salt. That's all I happen to have. Usually I do use the unsalted and then just add the little, you know, teaspoon, a half teaspoon, whatever it is of the salt, but I'm not doing that. I have a lot of salted butter, so that's what I'm using. And it's fine. I've made it with the salted butter before. It's not going to do anything different. So the recipe, like I said, I'm going to double it, but the, the main recipe is three sticks of unsalted butter, one and a half cups of sugar, four and a half cups of all-purpose flour, pre-sifted if you can get it or sift it, two large eggs, and two tablespoons of pure vanilla extract. And it also calls for one teaspoon of baking powder, which I'm not going to use because I want my cookies to stay really nice and flat because I'm going to be flooding them with royal icing and I'm going to be stenciling them. So I don't want them to rise. I want them to stay nice and flat, and that's how you do that, by keeping out the baking powder. All right, so to my mixer, I'm going to add, like I said, I'm doubling this, so I'm going to add my six sticks of butter. Oh, I hate wearing this mask because when I breathe, it's fogging up my glasses now. But I'm working with food and you're not feeling well. you got to take every precaution. You don't want to get people sick. So that's why I have my gloves on too. All right, so now I'm just going to put this on stir. I know it's loud, sorry. So I'm just going to mix up this butter for about a minute or so. And I'm going to gradually add my one and a half cups of sugar. But actually, I'm adding three cups because, like I said, I'm doubling it. So, in goes your sugar. stuff over because I feel like I'm in the dark corner here where there's no under counter light so if I kind of move this maybe that's better the lighting I don't know it's a dreary dreary day I do have all the lights on I have the light under my stove on 
but all right so now after that's creamed you want to take your two eggs which in my case it's going to be four and you always want to crack them into a bowl first so i'm just going to crack my four eggs into this bowl because God forbid you get some shells you can always get them out if you do it right into the machine then you're not going to be able to get out your eggshells if you make a mistake and get some of those eggshells in there okay I've got my garbage bowl behind me All right, so before I add my eggs, what I'm going to do is just, let me turn this on and get the paddle over there. I'm just going to scrape down this bowl a little bit. And this, this uh, dough will keep in the freezer for about a month, maybe two months. I'm not going to have it in there that long. I'm going to be using this within the next three weeks. So I'm going to probably end up having to uh, do like three more batches because that's how many cookies I need. I need a lot. So I just wanted to kind of get a jump on things. All right, so now I'm going to put it back on to back on to low and add one egg at a time Just want to make sure that that's very well incorporated so that's why I speeded it up a little bit you just want it nice and fluffy so that's gonna make for a beautiful cookie all right now vanilla I hate when people use imitation vanilla yes it's so much cheaper if i could get my hands on fresh vanilla beans the paste that you scrape out of it i would use that but i'm using pure vanilla that i get from bj's because it lasts a long time actually i gotta get more because this is actually almost gone and it calls for two teaspoons which I'm doubling it, so I'm going to do four. One, two, and I always like to add a little extra. <laughs> Three, four. Now you can make this with almond extract. That would make a delicious cookie. You can use lemon. You can make, use peppermint. Make a peppermint sugar cookie. You can use any extract you want. But because I have orders for these, and you never know with nut allergies, I just stick to the vanilla. And I don't play around with any other flavors. So, there you go. So, that's nice and mixed. Now, time for the flour. So, it's four and a half cups of flour which now I'll be adding nine. So I hope this bowl is big enough. I actually never did a double batch in here. This is like one of the biggest KitchenAids that they make. It's, uh, I think it's a eight quart or six and a half. I don't even know. I've had it for a long time. Well, since I got it, they probably came out with a bigger one, but at the time, this was like the biggest that they made. All right, so I'm going to put this on low, and I'm just going to start incorporating the flour, basically like one cup at a time. Just get 
a nice little stir going. Stop it and I'm gonna scrape down the bowl again. I want to do this every so often just to make sure that everything is being incorporated very nicely. Now these sugar cookies you can just put um you know a cherry in the middle and bake them. You can put just sprinkles on them. If you're going to make cookies like that, I would suggest adding the uh, the baking powder, which I believe it's one teaspoon or a half a teaspoon. Uh, in the description below the video, I'll put the, the regular recipe. Oops. <laughs> Don't you just love it when the flour comes shooting out? I have to bang it off the... I'm just trying to get some of the dough off of the, um, the beater. Sorry about that. I have to change my gloves too. I have more. I always keep gloves in my kitchen when I'm cooking. Just from always working in the delis and the restaurants and stuff, you know, you just learn to cook with gloves and your hair back, and if you're sick, throw on a mask. <laughs> Oops, I keep getting a stupid camera. Yeah, it's a lot easier just doing um, the single batch. I don't know if I'll ever do a double again, but let's see. And like I said, wearing this mask, my glasses are fogging up, so it's hard to see <laughs> what I'm doing. done then I'm just gonna wrap you know divide it into a couple of different balls uh, wrap it in saran wrap or parchment paper and then you know parchment paper first then saran wrap and then just stick it in the fridge till I'm ready to use it which 
Saturday, I'll be making the cookies for Thanksgiving for my cousin Catherine and some Thanksgiving cookies for family members. And this way I won't have to make the dough, it'll already be done. And if you're going to do like regular small two inch cookies, um, the batter, the one, the, you know, the regular recipe, not the double, makes about 36 cookies, I would say. So about three dozen. But since I use the big gigantic four inch, five inch cookies, I only get about 18. So, yeah. So I'm wondering how much dough I'm going to need for the baby shower because I have to make 80 cookies and they're all going to be huge. So, there you go. Crazy. Holy shit! Excuse my French. That was funny all over my machine. All right, let me move this out of the way quick. I just have a tiny bit more to dump in there and that's it. And, oh. That last little poof made a mess, I'll tell you that. I've made so many batches of cookies already that, you know, I really like making them. And like I said, these I'm going to flood with icing, royal icing white, and then I'm going to be airbrushing Thanksgiving stuff onto it. So I'm, I'm not, um, that's how I'm going to be decorating them. I'm going to be airbrushing them. So when I actually form the cookies and how I roll it out and all that on Saturday, I'll take a separate video. So if anybody wants to follow me, with making cookies this week, make your make your batter now, make your dough now, and then Saturday we could roll it out together and we can um, cut them out, bake them, and then the following day we could start decorating them. So, all right, so I'm just gonna continue to mix this for another minute. And I'm going to get everything out of the bowl and show you how I'm going to wrap them before I refrigerate. Be right back. Bye. All right. So I did end up taking half of it out of the bowl. And then when I noticed there was still some more crumbs in the bottom, um, I put it back in. And when you mix it, see how clean the bottom's getting? That's what you want. You want to make sure that everything was incorporated. So the stove is done. I'm going to take it out and wrap it and show you how I store it. Bye. Alrighty, so my dough is done. I have two big, huge pieces of parchment paper here. Just got to get this last glove on. I just washed my hands and I had the... My hand was still wet as I was trying to put the stupid glove on. So it's giving me a hard time. Okay, so I have, like I said, all my beautiful dough. I'm just gonna put it into two, two separate packages here. Now, if you wanted to right away start making cookies now, you could, but if you're doing cutout cookies, you wanna at least refrigerate this dough for about two hours just because it's such a large mound, if it was a smaller mound, probably a half hour to an hour. Because <clears throat> the, col the colder the cookies are when they go in the oven is going to be better because they're not going to spread. You don't want to cut out a beautiful cookie and then it spreads all over, the all over the sheet pan. And that's what causes that if you put the cookies in the oven when they're warm. 
So what I do is I chill my dough, I roll it out, I cut out my, my whatever uh, cookie I'm cutting out, I put it right directly onto the baking sheet, and then I pop the baking sheet back into the refrigerator for about 15 minutes. And then when I take it out, the cookies are so cold, and then you, I bake them for 13 minutes at 350 degrees. I peek at them at like 11 to 12 minutes because I like a softer cookie. I don't like a hard, crisp cookie. I feel that with the royal icing, which gets rock hard on top of the cookie, that if you have the rock hard royal icing and then rock hard, like a hard, crispy cookie, I just don't like it at all. I know a lot of people do that. And some people like that, but I prefer a soft cookie with the royal icing on the top, which gets kind of like rock hard. So, I, you know, most of the time, depending on the size of the cookie, I'll take the cookies out like really one minute, a minute and a half before they're actually done, right before they start browning on the edges. And that's to ensure for a nice soft cookie. All right, so I'm just going to wrap up these doughs. I'm going to put saran wrap around them and just stick them in the refrigerator until I'm going to use them, which is Saturday. So tune in on Saturday. Hit that notification bell so that you know when I'm going to be making the cookies, and this way you can see how I did it. So, yes, yeah, so Saturday I'll be doing Thanksgiving cookies. Um, I'm mostly doing plaque cookies and, like I said, airbrushing on them. But I think I have a turkey and maybe... What was the other one? A turkey? Oh, I know I have a pumpkin. I didn't want to do pumpkins. I think it's... Even though it's Thanksgiving... Thanksgiving is good for pumpkins. I feel like it's Halloween. I don't know, but I think I'm just going to do airbrushing. Yeah, so hit that notification bell. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed. And uh, stay tuned for my other videos on rolling, cutting, and decorating the sugar cookies. I'll have this full um, recipe in the description below with the temperature to bake at, the time, and also, um, I don't know if I said it in the beginning of the video, but everything has to be at room temperature when you're making your dough. You want your butter, your eggs at room temperature. So I actually took them out at like 7 o'clock this morning, and right now it's like 10, 10.30. So, you know, I let it sit out, at, you know, on the counter, you know, for about two, two and a half hours before I started making it. So you do want everything at room temperature. All right, so I have a lot more to do today. And um, I'm going to call this video an end. And I'll talk to all you guys soon. I'll see you on Saturday when I'm actually make, making and baking the cookies. Hope you join me then to see the final beautiful result of the Thanksgiving cookies that I'm going to be making. All right, everybody, take care. Thumbs up. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, and thanks for watching Arlene's Creations. Bye.